Hey guys, it's Eric here and this is my unboxing and review of the Infinix Note 10. This phone did not impress me and I'll tell you why but first off, let's see what we have in the box. When you open it up, you're greeted with the smartphone. Let's take out the sticker on the front and on the back. This is the 7 degree purple color. We have a warranty card, an envelope that houses the SIM ejection tool, your X Spark leaflet, your X Club dollar bill, a film screen protector and a transparent TPU case. This one fits snugly, has all the necessary cutouts and protects the camera bump. On the bottom compartment, we have an 18 watt fast charger with a lemon accent, a USB Type-C cable with an orange accent and a pair of earphones. All the same mismatched accents on the Note 8. Hmm. You can see all the 4G bands that it supports here including Glow 4G Band 28. On the front, you have a 6.95 inch Full HD Plus IPS LCD display with 20.5 by 9 aspect ratio. Right at the center top, you have a 16 megapixel camera with dual flash and a front firing speaker. On the back, you have a 48 megapixel triple camera setup with quad flash and some Infinix branding. On the left, you have a 3 in 1 tray that houses two 4G LTE nano SIMs and an SD card. On the right, you have a volume rocker and a power button which doubles up as your fingerprint sensor, sitting slightly lower than the frame. On the top, you have nothing. On the bottom, you have a speaker, a USB Type-C port, a microphone and a 3.5mm headphone jack. About the design, at first glance, the glossy plastic body has this crazy gradient color that has been split in half. It's not textured and it's not going to be mistaken for premium. Infinix went with the late 2020 camera bump design which looks great. This phone is very big and has some weight to it. Definitely for two-handed use. On the front, the screen is huge. We see that Samsung style Infinity O display that Xiaomi also uses a lot. It will be harder to tell these phones apart from a distance. The display has average viewing angles and sunlight legibility. We can also see that the new punch hole is not tiny but it does take up less space than the dual punch hole on its predecessor. Same bezels and chin size. Looking at the 1080p display versus the 720p display on the Note 8, you may not be able to see the difference on camera but you can definitely see it with your naked eye, especially up close like this. For videos, I can see that the colors on the Note 10 are more vibrant and the display is also brighter. You will definitely get a better viewing experience on the Note 10. I hope we never have to go back to the 720p on the Note series ever again. Note 10 comes with 128 gigs of storage and 6 gigs of RAM. You get about 113 gigs of available storage. We're running on Android 11 with XOS Dolphin version 7.6 slapped on top of it. This version is the same one on the Infinix Hot 10T and here it is also choked up in bloatware and ridiculous ads. Some of the bloatware cannot be deleted and I suggest you arm yourself with Nova Launcher cause those ads and pop-ups are a never-ending battle with XOS. The peak mode on here is not all the way blacked out like it is on the Hot 10T so people can still see pretty much what you're doing. So much for privacy. There's this feature that I thought was cool, Thunderback, which basically lets you minimize your app into a card on the screen. You double tap on the power button to minimize and drag around but I quickly realized that this feature is buggy and unresponsive. A good attempt, E for effort. Both of these displays are the standard, well, old standard 60Hz refresh rate but only the Note 10 has the ultra touch feature and what it does here is mimic the 90Hz faster scrolling experience to some small extent. Only works on home screen, settings, app drawer and recent apps interface. I won't be using this and it's a good thing it's optional. Moving on, now for those of you that didn't see my Note 8 review, Infinix has included the Xnote app on here as well and once again there is no support for it in the way of accessories. What you can do is pick up any pen with a rubber tip from any store near you or online and use that to paint or write. It's not going to be anywhere near as good as the original Note 6 aka the last real Note series from Infinix with a stylus. This phone was so overlooked but it did do that one thing right. In my experience as a professional artist, okay, 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 amateur artist, I did not in any way enjoy the rubber tip pen on the Note 10. It is however better than using your finger which is the only alternative. Your old Infinix stylus lying around will not work on this phone. 
Infinix Note 10 uses the MediaTek Helio G85 octa-core CPU clocked at 2.0 GHz and it's a gaming mid-range chipset that is basically the G80 with a few tweaks for an even better gaming experience. This is easily the best feature of the Note 10 and everything you do on this phone feels so smooth. It handles multiple apps and multitasking like a champ. I can do a comparison with other phones because you may need to see how fast it is for yourself. Be that as it may, I did encounter problems with heating while gaming. Definitely did not run as cool as the Helio G80 while playing PUBG and that affects battery life too. The fingerprint sensor on this phone is so fast that while using the finger that I keyed into the sensor to lock the phone, it unlocks right before I remove my finger. It seems like a security problem, maybe too much of everything is bad. Face unlock is pretty fast too, unlocks with your side view, not the most secure method and it does not read your face in poor lighting conditions. Here's how the dual speakers compare side by side the dual speakers on the Note 8. When it comes to gaming, as usual I played PUBG on HD graphics and high frame rates, the highest PUBG setting for this phone. It ran smoothly as can be expected, I enjoyed my gameplay on this phone and I have no complaints. Well, other than the fact that some of your opponents gaming on phones with higher refresh and touch sampling rates will smoke you out and end you before you can say Eric Okafo. The Infinix Note 10 is powered by a 5000 mAh battery and I put it through my usual battery tests including 4 hours of PUBG, 2 hours plus on Facebook, 1 hour on Twitter and Instagram etc all on Wi-Fi. This gave me under 10 hours of screen on time with 2% left to spare. I almost completely drained it and I still couldn't squeeze 10 hours out of a battery this big. Standby is also not that great. The Note 10 will however conveniently make it through a full day for most users who will not be gaming for that long anyway. It took me 30 minutes to charge from 0 to 65% and 2 hours and 10 minutes for a full charge with the charger that came in the box. The Note 10's camera is pretty feature rich. It's funny how they use the 48 megapixel lens on the Note 10 whereas the Note 8 uses a 64 megapixel lens. Do megapixels count? Let's find out. Outdoors, to say this selfie is bad would be an understatement. I can see that Infinix definitely used a low-end selfie camera. This picture looks like it was taken with the Snapchat filter because of how greenish it looks. With portrait mode, the depth sensing is all over the place, this selfie camera is a write-off already. With the primary camera, it's sharp and detailed, colors look true to life and sort of reminds me of the camera on the Hot 10T. It's probably the same one. With portrait mode, now we're getting warmer. It's still not perfect with depth sensing but it is pretty okay. Comparing the selfie camera with the Note 8, the Note 8 isn't all that great but it definitely looks a lot better. Better skin tones, more details and it looks filter free. I honestly don't know where they got this Note 10 selfie camera from but this is the kind of camera that will lead to a high return rate. Using the primary lens, this is where the Note 10 far outshines the Note 8. The Note 10 has so much texture and kind of makes the Note 8 look really bad. In terms of dynamic range, it's looking only slightly better on the Note 10. What is so obviously different is the color of that sky. Note 10 is color accurate as in true to life while the Note 8's photo is too warm and unnatural looking. Based on my new knowledge of what macro lenses can really do, I don't think either of these have any macro lens that's worth their salt. It is also ironic how the Note 8's 48 megapixel camera almost always takes better looking shots than the 64 megapixel camera on the Note 8. But does anyone still buy phones based on high pixel numbers in 2021? Indoors, the Note 10 is way too soft and falls short of what I would consider as mid-range quality. I cannot believe they did this to Note fans, a step in the wrong direction. Looking at the primary camera shots, I cannot believe that these phones are less than a year apart. Also, the primary and selfie cameras don't seem like they belong in the same phone. The primary camera is the biggest improvement yet from its predecessor but I don't think there's any possible reason to pair it with that selfie camera aside making profit. Night mode on the Note 10 is great. I feel like Infinix has got the night mode in the bag. It's one of the little things that they quietly get right. 
It shoots videos in 2K from the primary and secondary lens and there is no image stabilization whatsoever. So this is the front facing camera of the Infinix 10 and here's what the audio sounds like. The Infinix Note 10 escaped the transient curse that is that infamous 720p display but somehow got into fresh disaster with its selfie camera. I simply do not think it's a worthy upgrade from the Note 8 and I don't think you should buy this phone unless of course you hate selfies with all your might and like all Note fans, you're a fan of super large phones. Even at that, the Note 10 managed to not be exceptional at anything compared to its competitors. I really cannot recommend this phone to anyone who is looking for the next best thing under a $200 budget. I'll be leaving the exact prices in my pinned comment. There's a Pro model which goes for $260, US comes with a better Helio G95 CPU, a faster 90Hz refresh rate, 33W fast charging, a 64MP lens on the back and a 16MP lens on the front. I really cannot wait to test it out to see if that selfie camera is the same trap that is on here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it. Also follow me on Twitter and Instagram to see what I'm up to. Do subscribe for more videos like this as it will mean a lot to me and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.